my village is kicker keda that is pretty close to border is close to abohar and we are basically farmers i was in second grade fishing up second grade when we heard that there is a lot of there is one muslim boy was my friend he didn't come to school you know so there was kind of atmosphere of uh, uh, fear scared and uh, apprehension not knowing what is going to happen just um, little bit i know this i'm not not completely but i definitely know about my friend you know about we were together in the same class you know and he never showed up and where did he go we don't know i more remember more vividly in 1950 at that time i i was in fifth or sixth grade i was more cautious that we heard that our area is going to go to pakistan because we were only maybe 15 miles from the border or so at that time the scare was so much that we bundled up bundled up our important things let loose our animals and left our home went in, inside near butinda you know there's a our relative lives in lara mahabbat so we went to stay with them and i think i was in 6th grade just stepped in 6th grade and we heard little bit of patel you know he's putting everything together i was still young you know but i still remember how my mother everybody got all kind of you know clothes uh, collected together my grandfather used to keep some horses i don't know whether he stayed back maybe i don't recall all i remember that we left our village okay and then i think few months later i don't know how many months we did come back you know that's the soon the the, the rumor uh, that our area is going to go back to pakistan was over and that is going to stay in india so <clears throat> we went back to our village in the meanwhile still to be on safe side uh, i was told to go to school in lambi lambi was my nanke nanke my my mother's maternal home you know uh, so i joined their school and in those days i remember that some muslim houses you know they were vacant and we kids just for us as fun say we'll go in there and, and pick up all kind of steel things and bring up and play and you know all kind of for us it was kind of a little bit of a joke that the seriousness of thing were not still on us you know lots and lots of army so much army came to our school oh god they were station they were tents pitched up Oh, next, next to our school was row army after army. What about today? No, not that much there. I remember, in you know, from my village, the school was five miles away. We used to go to you know, and we used to take our little uh, food, you know, rotis. But then we used to eat by by little, you know, small little uh, uh, kind of uh, channel water, you know, which used to supply the water. We sit there, and all over the army, the army officer would come us. and they they share their food they say oh, come on kids take this one take their food and we used to like them you know and we used to ask them why are you here i say we are here to defend the country this and that all kind of tanks you know so we got used to them that was that gave us good confidence anyway that fine you know we are okay we are safe but you know uh, the, uh, the the main problem with me is this being so young in age i might not have felt the impact that deeply it's only when about i heard that my friend and particularly by the time we have to leave the village at that time i was a little older it was at least i was at least 11 years or so 12 year old and i 11 12 says you, you i still remember the feeling was very very upsetting to me why what is this you know or when can i go back to my village and this is because of the doing and then i uh, that built a hatred in my mind i was coming back from school when i saw in a in a you know in a room in which by which by the street and there were windows and your windows were in india with those you know iron bars and there was one guy inside and they say he's a muslim he didn't go back to pakistan he remained here because by the time pakistan has been there for 3 years now you know it was 50 or 51 i guess maybe i'm talking 52 and uh, he is still here and he uh, he was a worker here he doesn't want to go back uh, he loves this this people from who is working so much 
but there are some people who want to kill him because there was stories that the, the, in Pakistan we people are being killed and butchered so as a as a part of uh, revenge who were people used to hear this Muslim they go to kill him and this guy is now kept behind those things don't let him go out so that if he let loose now and he want to go to Pakistan he may not reach and that made me feel when I looked at his face and saw it, that there was a First time in my life, uh, I thought about this whole thing. Why? Why it has happened? Why it happened? What is the reason? Why my friend has to go? Why? What is all this? You know, what was the necessity for it? You know, I didn't know what. In, we knew a little bit of independence, but then you know, this guy has been living here for years in this town. He has been happy. My grand, uh, my nani, she told me that he's a very faithful person. But then. He has no axe to grind, very honest person. This is the first time it start, as a child, still a child, start to sinking in me, not in the same depth as I'm talking now, but at that time it was more like a curiosity come, very sympathetic feeling for the person who was weak, and really was in a beggar's kind of mood, begging for his life as if, you know. And I saw this guy, and then that was the first time I felt this thing. And then in Bohar, uh, I was in eighth, ninth grade. We were given a book. Uh, the, the name of the book was Rajsi Agu, means uh, political leaders. That was all about Nehru, Gandhi, Sri Nado, Balgangatar Tilak, all those people of Indian freedom fighters. And there was kind of our text. We read it, you know, <clears throat> how they fought British, how they dealt, but nothing about the partition. Nobody want to talk. Of course, there was a song, you know, "Tera Kya Gijana," you know, "Into the Into Badai Gijana." Then there was a, about Gandhi, you know, um, "Pyare Gandhi," you know, something. Like, I forgot the song now. They used to, you know, our headmaster was a very capable person, Manohar Lal. He used to give us lectures. We will build India. Nehru is our leader, and like that. And we used to really feel very proud. Having read that book, I used to feel I wish I I would could contribute about uh, our freedom. And Shahid Azam Bhagat Singh movie came in in very early 50s. Uh, very powerful movie, <clears throat> you know. I watched that in black and white. Name of the movie was Shahid Azam Bhagat Singh. And all those, you know, the patriotic feeling and all that thing was so highlighted that we tend to forget about the miseries. I did try to go and find many things in my own. I visited the Museum of India, the India Gate. I saw all the names written on it, and I saw that thing. And that time, it bothered me like anything. Crowds of people in India, a handful of them are controlling you. And then I read all Chai movie, Jhansi Ki Rani, and all this thing. How fragmented we Indians were. India was never, in, in the sense, a, a country. And that's what many people say. That's British legacy. To my mind, if someone has to reflect upon 1947 in terms of the family, you know, difficulty in terms of family disruption, as a family, as a unit, yes, there were many. You know, we didn't suffer at all much. You know, as compared with those who really were tortured and butchered and everything, and that's can that's family level. But in terms of uh, a larger level. Of a community, of a country, and that thing, they suffered a lot. They suffered a lot. So the freedom which we have gotten has come to us at a cost of very dear lives and so-called the cultural other erosion too. I, that that that's a part of the interpretation. But who knows? Everybody likes freedom. They say I'd rather be free. So at least we got freedom. What kind of freedom? I don't know. Ha, ha, ha.